I think one of the most universal or biggest problems that gardeners face is how to keep the weeds down without spending a ton of time or hours every day out in the garden weeding. Now, sometimes I will confess, I will find weeding a little bit therapeutic, but when you have a lot of square footage and you're growing a huge garden, I don't find it that therapeutic or that I need that much therapy for hours every day. So over the past 20 plus years that we've had a garden, and that's why both me and my husband work full time, we found quite a few different strategies to help keep the weeds at bay, or at least the time that we're weeding hands on time at minimum. And so over the years, we use several different methods. And I have to tell you, that no matter what, you are still going to be spending some time weeding. So just prepare your heart. There is no magic secret that means you will never have to weed again, but you can definitely spend less time doing it. And one of the things, so this section of the garden has not been weeded in over four weeks, just to give you a little bit of reference for what you're looking at. So no matter what, we always come through and end up weeding right around the plants. And you can see these weeds are, these are pretty large. And so the soil is pretty loose. We don't have compacted soil. We have pretty good real, actually soil. So these pull out really easy. If you have compacted soil and you let these weeds get really big, the larger the root system, the harder it is to pull them out by hand. So ideally, if you can spend a little bit of time every day and stay up on the weeds and pull them when they're small before those root systems have really had a chance to dig in, you're gonna be able to pull them out a lot easier. But around the plants, and especially for things um, in the onion family, they do not like to compete with weeds. So it's really best if you can keep weeded right around them. And hoes are great, and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite tools, but there's really no better tool for right around your plants than your hands. So don't worry, I'm not gonna have you weeding by hand the entire time, but it really is best around plants. Now next, we've got one of my other favorite garden tools, which is a hoe. And living in the Pacific Northwest where wood tends to rot, you get to be ingenious, and that's using hose clamps and duct tapes. I tell you what, with duct tape and baling twine, you can fix almost anything. It works especially well for your hoe. Now the hoe works best though, I keep trying to tell my teenage son this, when the weeds are pretty small. So you can see there's a lot of weeds here, but they're really small. And the reason for that is these do not have a large root system yet. So when I go like this, I'm pulling up the entire weed and I'm not leaving it in the ground. So as long as your weeds are small, like I'm see like these are a little bit bigger. And so when I go like this, they will just continue to grow unless I can totally get their entire root system pulled all the way up which we're gonna go with that. But the good news is when the weeds are small like this with the hoe, you can knock out a section of weeds really quickly. Now, one of the great things about planting all of your squash, so I've got my zucchini here, my summer squash, and then my winter squash, is as these vine out, they actually secrete a chemical or a compound that helps to inhibit weed growth. So that's why once they become established and you really start to look in there, there's a few weeds that I'll have to go through and pull by hand down in here. But especially like with the pumpkins and stuff where they're vining out quite a bit, spaghetti squash, etc., you don't get very much weed growth once they begin to vine out. So I like to plant mine together in clumps like this because that way I have less weed weeding to do in that area where they're vining and I can, whatever I do need to do, and as you can see it was mainly where they hadn't vined into this area yet, um, I can do quickly with my hoe. But for these larger weeds, the hoe does not work because you'll kind of pull some of them up and the dirt back a little bit, but which is what my son likes to do because he finds it much easier to hoe than try to pull them out by hand. But you'll go through this section and so you can see it kind of looks like it's weeded as I'm doing this, 
but you'll find you'll come back in just a few days and a lot of them will have perked right back up and started growing again because their root went too far down and we didn't get them all the way eradicated. So for these larger sections, I don't use the hoe and I don't weed by hand. That's where I like to pull out the big guns in the garden. Okay, so here we have the big guns. And some of you asked if I would do a cold start on this, meaning this has not been started and it hasn't been ran at all today. We're in the middle of August, but believe it or not, our overnight lows are still in the 50 degree mark right now. And so obviously it's not super cold, but the engine's been outside the whole time down in the 50 degrees. So it really is easy to start these BCS tractors um, the engines are really great. So when we're doing a cold start like we are right now, we're going to make sure that we put the choke on. So this is, sorry, this is the choke is on and I just turned the fuel on as well. So then here we go. It's a pull start. So we're going to do one pull and it will probably not start the very first pull. I lied. It started. So. Choke off. It's ready to run. People have really strong opinions on using a tiller in the garden or not. And as you can see, because I just used mine, we kind of do a mixture of both. So I till up these edges here where we're not planting, uh, but it helps to keep the grass from our lawn from encroaching in. And you can see, I have a, in a, if you're curious about, we use a weed burner. We actually use one of those big uh, flamethrowers and we burn back these weeds in the early part of the summer and springtime, usually about twice. And that does help keep them down from around this fence line. Um, I'll link to the video so you can watch and, and see how we do that earlier in the year if you're curious. So we really just use the tiller um, to do a rough where you can see I just went through basically one pass um, each side and that chops up the weeds. It chops up a lot of the organic matter and then it will compost down back into the soil. But we just do this on the outside where we're not really planting here anyway. It's kind of like on the border. So in the past, we have just tilled um, up the garden every single year. But last year, so a full year ago, um, we started using the wood chip and the mulching method, um, similar to Back to Eden, though I'm not following it exactly, uh, because we laid down cardboard to help keep the weeds. And then the cardboard also, a lot of the earthworms, we already had pretty good fertile soil, so we had a lot of earthworm activity already. They helped to eat that cord cardboard, and then we put the wood chips down on top. So if you're curious more about that method and how we used it and how it's working, um, again, I'll link to that video. You can check that out as well. But that's the other method that we use with the weeds, though there are still weeds that come through. And so that's using, you can use some straw here where I had around the garlic that would, just was pulled out and harvested. And then you can see the wood chips throughout here. So those are all of the different methods that we use, but really just staying on top of it. I know most of us don't have, you know, two to three hours span where we can go out and weed. So for me, I found that if I can spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes in the morning and just doing a section and then each day just kind of move and do a section. Um, it's a, a lot easier. And when those weeds are small, like you can tell, you can use the hoe, you can pull those out really quickly. If you let them get big, like I did in certain areas, it's gonna take a lot longer and you really have to either pull them out by hand or use that rototiller to get the roots all the way out. But using a combination of these methods has worked really well for us. And as you can see from the garden, I had not weeded the majority of this garden had been well over a month. I had just pulled weeds a few places. Maybe for the past month, I would say maybe it spent an hour weeding this entire garden. And that was mainly just around all the new little starts and the plants that we had. So you can check out my how to grow vegetables at home playlist and learn more about growing your vegetables with less work and increased harvest.